We talked about representing elements and ions. We need to talk about how we represent compounds. We use chemical formulas to represent compounds. And a chemical formula is going to show uh, the relative number of atoms of each element. So here's an example. Here's the chemical formula for water, which you've probably all seen before, H2O. We use subscripts to indicate how many atoms of that element there are. So the H for hydrogen and the subscript 2 indicates two hydrogen atoms. And then here's O for oxygen, and there's one oxygen atom, so we wrote nothing because chemists don't like to write the number one. Because we're thinking, well, if there were zero oxygens, I wouldn't have written the symbol in the first place, right? So the fact that I wrote oxygen tells you at least there's one, and if there was more than one, I'll put a number. So the element symbol means one, and if there's more than one, you write a subscript. Some common chemical formulas. Table salt, NaCl. There's no subscripts. They each have one. So sodium is Na. Chlorine is Cl. NaCl, one-to-one -one ratio of atoms. The mass ratio would be different, but the ratio of atoms is one-to-one. -one. Carbon dioxide, CO2. There's one carbon and two oxygens. One carbon for every two oxygens, a ratio of one to two. Here's the formula for sucrose, table sugar. C12, H22O11. That's kind of a complicated ratio. 12 to 22 to 11. That's the relationship. So the subscripts in that chemical formula are really important. If you change those, you're describing a different compound. We can look at two compounds of carbon and oxygen. CO, a ratio of one to one, is carbon monoxide. That's a toxic compound. Carbon dioxide, CO2, a ratio of one to two. That is relatively harmless. Every time you breathe out, you're putting carbon dioxide into the air. There's lots of carbon dioxide in the air. It's not hurting anybody. The trees like it a lot. They take in carbon dioxide and spit out oxygen. We do the reverse. It's kind of nice that way. But the numbers there are really important. <coughs> so how do you decide which element goes first in the formula? Usually we put the most metallic element first. And if there isn't a metal in there, then we, we put the one that's closest to the metals on the periodic table. So if we look at sodium chloride, we're going to have NaCl. We're not going to have ClNa. I'll know what you mean, but it looks ridiculous. <coughs> um, and we would have N2O, not ON2. Well, both of those are nonmetals, right? But if you look on the periodic table, which one is further to the left, nitrogen or oxygen? The nitrogen is further to the left. The metals are on the left. Nitrogen is closer to the metals, so we list him first. <coughs> this is a table showing the order. Oops, sorry. I'm going to stop now because I'm coughing too much. 